Hey, my name is Jack Lundin. I'm the president and CEO of Bluestone Resources. We just released the results of our feasibility study on our flagship Cerro Blanco Gold Project located in southern Guatemala. And we're extremely excited about our pathway to production and moving this project forward. Jack, good to see you, buddy. Uh, I haven't seen you since last June. You've had your head down. I've uh, got the feasibility study out. And I guess you want to talk about that. I've got a few questions, but let's start with um, maybe give some of the highlights around the feasibility study, first of all. Yeah, sure. Happy to do that. So we just released these results. We've been working really hard on uh, getting this feasibility study out the door. Um, you know, in, in just 51 weeks ago, we announced a PEA demonstrating very robust economics on an open pit project. Cerro Blanco was previously contemplated as an underground development, if you recall, and, and from for us, when we joined, when I joined in January 2020, we really were able to look at this project through a different lens, through success that we had in our drilling campaign and really our engineering and understanding of the, the deposit. It's much more amenable to surface mining methods. So we changed gears and did a PEA on an open pit concept. And for the past year, we've been looking to validate those numbers through further detailed engineering. Uh, further optimization work. And now, just yesterday, we released the results of this feasibility study showing a project that's capable of producing over 300,000 ounces of gold a year and 1 million ounces of silver a year during its peak years of production. And because it's a near surface, high grade deposit, we're going to be generating significant returns. There's a low operating cost. And therefore, our net present value at a 5% discount is over $1 billion US. 1 billion US dollars and over 30% IRR. So we've got a really great project here with a rapid payback due to the high grade nature of this project. And, uh, you know, we're just very excited to, to advancing. This is a big stage gate for us to, to move forward. It is. Some of the numbers in there are, 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 are huge. But if, if I look back to our conversation of last year, I think, you know, when you made that switch or decision, you made the decision to make the switch from underground to, to a, an open pit scenario, I think the market, you know, they weren't happy. They didn't understand it. They felt that there would be big delays um, coming off the back of it. I guess today's numbers show economically why you made that decision, because they're fantastic, right? It's a quick quick payback, so you know, high margin project. But to the, to the point of, 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 you know, whatever it was, nine months ago, you know, permits are needed, environmental studies, um, you know, need to be completed and, and, and all of that and, 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 and submitted. Are you going to be able to get those? Is this going to delay things? Or do you think that you've got the answers now or a better understanding of, you know, the timing around those components? Well, I think what happened last year when we announced we were changing our strategy from an underground to an open pit, I mean, that's not very common. You don't really see that in the industry. And of course, what that means is it did delay our pathway to getting into production. But we tripled the value of this project and doubled the resource of gold and silver and really when you look at this deposit, it is much more amenable to surface mining methods. So from that standpoint, it was a no-brainer. Yes, um, we're delaying production because we thought we could have a pathway to production with an underground concept in 2022, so this year. Now it's pushed out to the end of 2024. But when you look at the numbers and you look at what this project is capable of generating, Open Pit is the way to go. I think also last year when we were announcing the PEA, gold was reaching a, you know, an eight month low, a lot of money was pivoting out of the gold sector into other commodities or, you know, mainly copper, but also in other industries as well. Um, you know, the pandemic uh, rebound was much stronger than anybody I think anticipated and, and gold took a hit for that. But now as we've continued to de-risk the project and advance it and keep to our new timelines and set those new expectations on the project, I think you can see that there is more momentum coming into the name coming into the project and we've got a team fully dedicated on building this resource out in the right way. And, and that is what we do. We focus on making sure we're maximizing the benefit of the resource. And if we were to go with the underground, we wouldn't be maximizing that benefit. So it's, it's quite, it's quite simple when you just try and, you know, break it down to its bare, bare parts and see how does Cerro Blanco look compared to an underground concept much better with an open pit and therefore you know, we know that we're making the right choice here and, and we have a team to, to advance this project. So, right. So, you know, so let, let, me, let me talk to you, though, because I, about, about this environmental component and the permitting bit, right? Because as you mm -hmm. say, you know, when we spoke last year, gold price was, you know, it was lower. 
Um, it, it's it's kind of come back, steadily come back. Uh, as of your, as, as the share price saying, we were at 168 when we spoke last, 123, 125. I said two, 223, 225 um, as we speak today. It, is is the market and is gold price doing all the heavy lifting for you, or do you think you are getting some of the credit for the numbers as as you see uh, as we're looking at um, today? Because there's there's got there's got to be some recognition for the market about what this study has done um, in terms of the economics, clearly. But do you think everyone gets it? Do you think people are still unforgiving? That's a great question. To be honest, I think that a lot of the uh, performance in our share price that we've been seeing, we're almost at all time highs and now we're above $2. We're about $2 and 20 and we still see ourselves climbing a bit. I think that the market is still digesting the results of this feasibility study, but we were able to update the market um, in early January, talking about all of the progress we had made last year. We did submit an amendment to our environmental license. So Keep in mind, this already is a permitted project. We just need to amend the existing license to reflect the new, the change in development strategy. So I think, you know, people see that we've continued to advance and we've kept tight timelines. Uh, we have an aggressive schedule, but we know that we can do it. So now what I'm hopeful is that the feasibility studies released, people will really see these numbers. A PEA, it's kind of like a scoping study, but an FS, we're using that to finance our project and build our project on. So these numbers are real, there's engineering in there, and we were able to improve the economics from the PEA, which you often do not see as well. So, you know, this is where we're really excited to kind of promote this project because it is very robust. There are not many projects like this that have the type of returns that Cerro Blanco can can generate. Right, and, and what were the things that adjusted? Because I, I was obviously reading that, you know, you, 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 you gain in some places, lost in others, but um, you know, net net, it, it would the, clearly the economics are better. But in terms of the the, the cost side of things, the capex, et cetera, um, if you can so maybe talk around the sort of adjustments you've had to make there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, things have changed in the last year. Obviously, material pricing, commodity pricing has increased, so that's been reflected in cost increases in our capex. We went from about five hundred and fifty million. That was the anticipated initial capital in the PEA. And today we're about 572 million US. So the the changes on the upside, I mean, where, where we've seen cost creep have been in freight, logistics, inflation, materials. We've changed scope a little bit. We're now building a camp. And so we have a camp and catering system in place. Water management as well, cost for reagents and our strategy on, on our water treatment facility and our dewatering wells those have seen increase increases. Where we've seen savings is really in our optimization in the pit. We've been able to really focus on getting to the high grade zone earlier, increase our mining rate, but because we can get to that high grade or earlier, we were able to justify shrinking the size of the processing facility from 5 million tons per annum to 4 million tons per annum. So significant savings there. As well, when you get more detailed in your engineering, the contingency on the project goes down a little bit. So we've had some savings there. And then lastly, the biggest savings for us was looking at the talent pool in Guatemala when it comes to engineering capabilities. We're going to be supplementing some of our expat engineers with some of our local content in Guatemala. So we're working with a firm mine building company called G Mining Services. They will be overseeing the construction of the project, but they're also going to be training and working with local engineers. So those are kind of the the offsets that we've seen. And and net net, we're looking at you know not that big of an increase in capex, which is why you know we've improved the production profile and we have better economics today. Okay, now we, yeah, we know G Mining Services um, obviously um, spun out G Mining up in Brazil too. Looking forward to seeing how they get on. Um, Right. Can we just talk about the the environment? Because again, it's, it, it's always going to come back to. I mean, most of the questions sent out. You know, when will the permit be here? When is the EIA coming? I know it's a, an, a, an amendment, um, but it's it's a factor of the environment. You've got you've got an election year next year. You've got the current um, incumbent. I think is this his last term? Are you getting? You can only do one term. Right. So, so yeah. So, can, so basically, election. is there momentum? for you now that you've reached this point, or do you think you're going to miss this electoral, electoral cycle and have to pick up with a whole new bunch of people? No, we prepare ourselves for any transition in, in government. But you know, right now, of course, there is a window of opportunity. We've spent several years building a strong relationship with the 
central government and we really con want to continue building that reputation so that it can transfer into the next uh, president presidency and, and cabinet and therefore you know we're focused on making sure that we see where the opportunities are there is a window now for us to get our project permitted before any change in in the political system in guatemala we've submitted our application we understand the process because this project has been in existence for so long. It was discovered back in 1998. We're the fourth company to own the Cerro Blanco project. There has been permit approvals, permit amendments in the past. And for us, with our permit amendment application, we believe that we put together the most sound document that a mining project has ever had in Guatemala. And I can say that because we were really focused last year on making sure that we did all of our um, baseline data collection from an environmental and social standpoint. So we're confident that we have a very sound document. And as well, a good indication for us on the permitting process is that we are building a bridge that will t connect the seven villages, including the Cerro Blanco project to the town of Asuncion Mita. We submitted an EIA, brand new EIA document in December, and we've already got that EIA approved. We're looking to start construction within the next several weeks. So we saw that process, a successful permitting process happen already in the past you know, couple months. And so we understand and we, we spend our time, we do our homework, and that's why we're confident we can continue to advance this project. Right. So like, so I, I don't really want to spend too much time on like the feasibility study because like, G-Money Services are involved. They're a good company. They've, they've you know, um, worked with some of the, the biggest, and, biggest and the best. What I am wanting to talk about is what is going on elsewhere in South America. It kind of make, makes people a little bit nervous around, you know, you've got concessions being um, taken off of Canadian companies. You've got Mexican government you know, flexing and, 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 and intimating nationalization. You've got Chilean governments talking about, you know, increasing royalties. Um, you know, same story, you know, all, all across, so, you know, South America and its broadest context. I know Guatemala is its own ind independent state, and you've talked about you know the the the, the current incumbent. Um, but you you too have to take you have to be very concerned and and take an active part in terms of you, your ESG and how you in interact locally. So you've talked about building a bridge and connecting. I'm assuming that bridge is free to use for all, not just for the use of the mine. Yeah, that's right. It right. will be donated to the municipality. So, right. I mean, it's uh, we're building it, but it's going to be for everybody to use. Right. And what what else is going on there? Because you know, the, the you know, going from underground to open pit. I mean, do we? I mean, how many other open pit uh, mines are there operating in Guatemala? Well, there there's several operating privately owned open pits, and there are some that are currently not in operation. And then there's one that just had a consultation process completed. CGN's Phoenix. Uh, nickel mine um, in, in the east of the country. So, you know, there is mining operations. There is a troubled past with mining in Guatemala. We're fully aware of the challenges that are that have occurred there. But every country that has natural resources has gone through periods of challenges with natural resources and exploitation of those natural resources. What we can do is focus on our project, how we develop it, Focusing, focusing on sustainable resource development, being inclusive with not just the central, but definitely the local stakeholders. We focus on training. We focus on education. We focus on capacity building for suppliers. And we really want to make sure that all of the content that we can build and all of the opportunities that we can create in the surrounding immediate area of influence, that's what we're doing. And so when we stand by that and we show that that's what we're doing, all while protecting the environment as much as possible as we build this project, we know that that's that's what we can control. So that's where we spend most of our time focusing. Right. Geopolitically in, in Central and Latin America, of course, there's there's challenges everywhere, and so we have to stay up to speed with current events. But um, you know, we we control what we can control. Right. And and in terms of the in terms of that engagement, you know, just just dig down on it for, for me because we, again, we've seen projects all around the world. It, it's it's a relatively new phenomenon. There's always been sort of NGO activists and so and, and so forth, whether it be on boards of, uh, sorry, uh, sitting there within funds um, or uh, as uh, significant shareholders, um, it, it, it is a it's a, a ever increasing problem. So, what are you doing at a local level? How how you, you talked about retraining, you know, locally the engineering firm actually money services training people locally. But what else are you doing in terms of job job creation or, or more importantly, understanding of what mining can mean to the local economy as well as to the state? 
Yeah, no, happy to answer that question. I mean, it's a big focus for us. It's one of our key pillars, right? The the mine itself, the development of the of the mine is a, is is a technically challenging thing to do. But for us, the social context and understanding what the challenges are in the communities in which we operate is is more important, to be honest. And so we look at kind of where the opportunities and where the challenges are. And what we've done is we've put in adult education programs so that these adults that have a lower level of education can become quickly certified to then have an opportunity to join our training programs. We've just initiated uh, 500 training positions to be um, trained in a local vocational school that will develop the skills so that they can come and work on the construction of the project. And then we'll do the same for the operations because it's a different skill set required for the operations. So education and training, building that capacity is a big focus. But then a big component is for us to be able to source as many materials locally as possible is, is what we want to be doing. And that also requires some efforts as well to ensure that we're in, in, that these suppliers are certified and that have the capability to support our mine with the volumes that we'll require of, of those specific type of materials. So training, capacity building, and then there's another component that's really important, which is economic diversification, because not everybody is going to be able to service the mine or work at the mine. We, we are fully aware of that, but there's no reason why other industries cannot thrive alongside the mine in that area, right? So we focus on trying to bring in opportunities for other businesses or entrepreneurs to look at starting small businesses in the region and and that's you know a big component as well that diversification because we want to create we see this area as a strategic economic area in guatemala and i think you know the mine is what really creates the opportunities for other industries to come in and and you know make some make a splash as well so that's that's kind of our holistic social focus good to, okay good to hear right feasibility study done it's now time to well you, you should be able to go and start marketing um i guess they'll be asking similar questions to, to what we've been asking today um what's what's the road ahead look for look like for you what else do you need to do to prepare yourself to go and have those conversations around uh, money where will you be going you know and, and have you already started or engaged with people yeah well i mean it's been busy and it's getting busier now so that the feasibility study was re released yesterday we've definitely been you know dealing with a lot of uh, investor updates and a lot of calls and we, you know because it's such a great result we're very excited to kind of promote this project and for us, project financing is, is really something that needs to work in parallel so that all of our team, they can continue working on the schedule that we've put out there. So for us now, focusing on our project financing package, we are looking at various opportunities or options to finance. Of course, there's an equity component. We have a lot of silver, so we're looking at silver streams. And then the largest form of project financing that we're going after is a debt facility. We've engaged with a syndicate of banks that we were talking with while when we were looking and thinking about doing this project as an underground. So now that the feasibility studies out, this is our bankable feasibility study. We'll send this these results to these uh, potential lenders and go through the motions of trying to attract as much funding for a, as attractive terms as we can get. And then hopefully, you know, by the end of this year, we have a full fully financed project or at least a pathway to being fully financed. And what that means is. We may have to do some bridge financing to get us over the line until we get that full full finance package in place. Right. I mean, and I know some in the, in the FS, you're not sort of well. It's not. It's not obvious. It's it's, it's hard to find the capex number. So, what, what's the number that you're actually going to be going after? And 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 obviously, you've outlined what you'd like, how you'd like to get that money in. But what's what's the total quantum? Yeah. So so when we look at the feasibility study, you know, initial capex. So so construction costs to purely build and get ourselves into operations. That was that 570 million number. Of course, that doesn't include things like, um, you know, financing costs or costs to get us from where we are today to that construction point. VAT is also not included in that number because it's recoverable um, and that's about 60 million. So all in all, we're looking at more than 750 million US that we will have to be financing this project to get fully financed uh, or fully funded. Um, and, and therefore, you know, it's, it's a larger, larger financing than when you look purely at the initial capital number. However, when you look at the payback, payback on this project 
is less than two years at current gold prices. We're using $1,600 an ounce. The banks will, of course, use less than that. But still, even in a lower commodity price environment, this is one of the best projects out there because it's such a low cost of operation. Therefore, we think financing should not be as challenging as for other projects of this size. Okay, and, and obviously, first things first, you've got to go and get this money raised. But you know, with a 14 year life of mine uh, and the capex that's going in, and appreciate the payback and the margins, etc., there's an expectation that you would look to you know inc- do resource upgrades, uh, etc. Um, when when do you start looking at that again? Because obviously, I think I think your your card is full for the next few months. But what should we expect further down the line? Well, we're always looking at opportunities to grow and expand, right? And there is a two kilometer mineralization trend starting from the south where the Cerro Blanco deposit is and, and, and moving north. So we've already got an exploration team, geologists, our VP of exploration, David Cass, has a drill program that he's ready to kick off as soon as we can get funding to do that. So it wouldn't be out of the question for us to put a small exploration campaign throughout the uh, construction phase of the project uh, because, you know, there is a significant opportunity to add resources to this or mine life to this uh, to this project through satellite pits to, to the north or elsewhere. So exploration potential is significant on this project as well. Right. And then just, just to finish off, and again, for people new to, new to this story, or perhaps look, looking in and seeing if the, is there still a growth component to this is London Group, record is get things into production yourselves. You, the money side has not historically been an issue for you. So you're not looking for any strategic investor to come in here and help you out to move through to the next phase, are you? Well, I, I wouldn't say that the money side hasn't been an issue historically. I think over the years um, and over the decades, really, we've been able to grow, build a reputation and um, you know improve our, our, our ability to bring projects from one phase to the next because it really does take a strong reputation to be able to prove to lending groups that we are the right team to build. And that's where you can create the most value by bringing a project from either exploration or study phase into construction and then operations. When you can bring a company through those phases successfully on time, on budget, um, that's where you're creating the most value. So that's what we're looking to do at Bluestone. And I really believe that this project, when you see the economics and the returns, uh, it's it's totally worth it, and and that's that's where we stand today.